What is up guys? Today we're going to be doing uh, how to get the best computer for editing on the Mac side. If you want to see the PC side of things, go ahead and click this annotation over the screen right now. Or check out the link in the description. We'll be doing some more videos on, on the best computer for PC. But this is all about Macs today because I know a lot of my fans are Mac users as I do tutorials on Final Cut Pro. And this is the way to go when you're buying a Mac for editing. I'll go into the Mac section, and uh, of course, you have all of these great uh, SKUs for the Mac. You have the MacBook Air, Mac Mini, Mac Pro, MacBook Pro, iMac, Mac Pro, all these great SKUs. And everyone knows that the Mac Pro is the best, Mac Mini is the worst, these are the desktops, yada, yada, yada. But the thing is, there's only two Macs here that are worth buying, and they have black bezels in these pictures. This is the MacBook Pro and the iMac. The reason why you wouldn't buy a MacBook Air is there's just not enough processing power in it. The reason why you wouldn't buy a Mac Mini is just because, once again, not a lot of processing power in it. And uh, the reason why you wouldn't buy a MacBook Pro, or a Mac Pro rather is because it's just sort of outdated and it's a little bit too much for what most editors are doing anyway. So I would I would recommend if you are looking for a power machine in terms of like really hardcore 3D rendering and heavy heavy editing like a production computer I would wait until they upgrade it in the spring of 2013 uh, but for now just ignore that anyway so between these two the MacBook Pro and the iMac the more affordable but less portable option is the iMac uh, the iMac once you go in here you have a 21.5 and a 27 inch monitor to be honest I don't think the monitors mean much when it comes to editing because once you're in the range of 20 plus inches you have so much real estate when you're editing that it's not exactly uh, much of a you know I, I guess issue in terms of having a few more inches um, so anyway so with these two beautiful computers here you have the i5 across the board now, when it comes to processors, the first thing we're going to talk about is processors. You want to look for the most cores, you want to look for the highest clock speed, and you also want to look for a lot of cache in the processor. These i5 processors tend to have about 6 megabytes of cache. So you want to look towards the i7 processors, which have 8 megabytes of cache, which, in, uh, which basically allows you to do a lot more multitasking on those quad cores you have. So with the 21.5 inch model, the only one that can do i7 is this one. So go into here, and you'll see you have the option to upgrade to an i7, which for $200, to be honest, if you were building a computer, it wouldn't be $200, it'd be about $100 for the upgrade. But to be honest, it is a good deal, considering you probably don't want to get inside of your iMac and upgrade your processor. Uh, in terms of memory, I would highly recommend upgrading your memory to 16 gigs, but not from Apple. Do not buy RAM from Apple. Apple's the biggest ripoff when it comes to memory, and I'll show you exactly why. If you go to OWC, Other World Computing, which is MacSales.com, and you click on the iMac, you click on the current one, you can see that you can get 16 gigabytes of RAM for only $100 less than what they want. So I would recommend buying it from here. It's an easy upgrade. Uh, there's just a little panel on the bottom of the iMac. You just open it up and you slide in your RAM. It's pretty simple. Now for storage, uh, this is kind of an extra thing. You don't need to do it. Um, but if you have the 250, I would recommend getting the Fusion Drive. The Fusion Drive basically caches um, with a solid state. So it basically increases the speed to an ultimate performance on the mechanical drive, which is 5400 RPMs, I believe. And it allows you to have much quicker read-write times on your drive. The reason why this is a good thing is because when you're loading in files, importing files, and copying data constantly, you constantly want to have a high read-write rate so you have quicker rendering, quicker importing, and just all around quicker response when you're using Final Cut or any of your other editing programs. So I would recommend this if you could dish out the extra 250, and that's pretty much it when it comes to the iMac 21.5 inch. Now if you're willing to go up to the 27 inch, uh, let me tell you, it is well worth it. Uh, wrong one. It is well worth it, but you have to spend about 2000 to get what you want uh, at the base. Then you need to upgrade it. So let's go into here, and you can see you can get the i7. Once again, very good deal. This is the 3770K i7. Great processor uh, for overclocking, but you can't overclock on the uh, Mac, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, but it is a very good processor nonetheless. Now let's look at the RAM real quick. This one, you can have 32 gigs, but look at this. $600 for 32 gigs. What a ripoff, because if you come over here, it's $400 less. So I would recommend going to max sales, upgrading the 32 gigs. It's only $200. Don't listen to what Apple tells you. And once again, I'd recommend getting the Fusion Drives. Uh, the Fusion Drives, you can get upwards of 3 terabytes, which is insane. And even then, you can also get 600, 768 pure solid-state storage, which is extremely fast. But 
once again, that's pretty expensive. But like I said, if you are the type of guy who has a lot of money in your pocket and you need a production machine for your office or whatever, I would recommend with go, uh, going with this type of uh, format, this kind of setup. Now let's talk about graphics. Now we have the option to upgrade the graphics. To be blatantly honest, these are both great video cards, including the first one here, the 675 one gigabyte. This is a great card. You really don't need to upgrade this much more if you're just editing, especially if you are just doing uh, production edits inside of Final Cut. Now, if you decide to get into Cinema 4D, you can see me down here showing you. If you decide to get into Cinema 4D and you're doing a lot of 3D uh, rendering and you're doing a lot of graphics, it might be worth getting the card, but unless you're doing heavy amounts of graphics, uh, it's really not worth it. But if you decide to do some gaming also, if you want to game on your Mac a bit, uh, or if you want to put Windows on it and game on the Windows end of things, I would recommend getting the 680 MX. It's an amazing graphics card. It's basically the mobile version of the 680, which is a pretty pretty beefy uh, pretty beefy card there. And I've actually looked at the benchmarks. It's pretty substantially good compared to most GPUs. So anyway, uh, it's, it's the best GPU Apple's ever put in their computers. Let's just put it that way. Now let's go back to Mac. Now let's go to the MacBook Pros now. So the MacBook Pro, in my opinion, is the better option. Not because it's faster or anything, or, you know, because it, it's not. <laughs> but just because the simple fact that it's portable. I like portable machines. It's great to go downstairs, chill out with the family, or chill out with friends, and just edit a little bit or render a bit while you're out and about. Um... That's just my option. I mean, you can always hook it up to a desktop display, and you can use it as if it's a desktop, and that's just my favorite uh, overall setup. So anyway, uh, with these uh, with these MacBook Pros, uh, we're gonna skip all these 13 inches. Do not get a 13 inch, and I'll tell you exactly why. Unless you have, unless you're really low on your budget and you can only afford a $1,200 computer, uh, which is not gonna perform very well. By the way, it's a dual core, um, which is pretty shitty for editing, but. The 13 inches, the amount of real estate you get with them is so awful that it's very difficult to edit on. I've tried 13 inch before. Believe me, 2 inches makes a huge difference. And that is what she said, trust me. It, it, it makes a huge difference. Um, anyway, so with the 15 inches, I would not recommend going for the retina display. The reason why is, although it's a very good display, I've seen it in person, it is amazing. Uh, it will take away from your performance, because when it comes down to it, when you're driving more pixels on your display, it takes more processor power, it takes more graphics power, and overall is going to slow down the performance of your machine. I've heard a lot of things about how laggy the machine is when you're running that amount of pixels on your display, and to be honest, it's just not worth it in terms of editing. Now, in terms of editing, I would go with the 15-inch, and to be honest, I would lean towards the 2.6 the gigahertz. But the 300 megahertz between these two machines isn't going to make the, a world of dis difference, to be honest. So if you can't afford to get 2200, it's it's okay because, to be honest, with that money that you have that you saved, this is a better option because you'll be able to upgrade it. You'll be able to put 16 gigs in here, which means it would only cost you about 100 bucks, and then you can upgrade this to. Um, what I would do is I'd upgrade it to a terabyte drive. And then I'd uh, go ahead and mod the drive, the computer, to hold a solid state in my CD drive, which you can look up tutorials on. I'm not going to go into that. And uh, you can, you know, you have more room to upgrade your machine with the $1,800 model. So I'd recommend going for the $1,800 model, upgrading it as much as possible. I personally went FF class. I upgraded this to 16 gigs, got the $2,200 model, and I figured, you know what, it's going to last me a good amount of time, so it's it's worth it overall. But if you can't afford it and you want to just invest more money into the computer, then go with the $1,800 model. That 0.3 gigahertz isn't going to make much of a difference. So anyway, that's that's the Mac uh, overall editing computer help with getting choosing which computer you want. There's really not much more to be said, uh, to be honest. When it comes down to it, like I said, the only two ones to go with are the MacBook Pro and the iMac. I'm sure down the line they'll upgrade the MacBook Pro, or MacBook Pro, the Mac Pro. And the reason why it's not as good right now is it's still using older GPUs, it's still using older RAM, and it's still just an older machine, and they're going to upgrade it a lot very soon for the same price, so it's going to be much more worth it then. So anyway, that's pretty much it. I am Tony. If you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos about editing, uh, about Macs, about technology, about computers, about gaming, any of those things, go ahead and check out my channel and subscribe, and like and comment on this video to tell me and give me some feedback. So that's pretty much it. I am Tony, and I'll see you guys next time.